In this video, I'll be showing you guys how I find great entries in the market using the ICT New York and London AM kill zone alongside with the TGFX strategy. So what we can do is actually start from Friday and kind of work our way through here. So I'll just delete it up to this point. Now, the first thing I always want to do is start from a higher time frame structure. I want to see what price is creating on first the daily time frame and then working down to the lower time frames. Now, on the daily time frame, we could see that GBP USD was ranging for quite some time. So instead of focusing on each individual candle here, we'd mostly want to focus on the outskirts of price, the highest points and the lowest points. Now we can see we had a high, lower high, lower high. So what I'm going to do is just simply mark this high off. OK, that will be the high I focus on. Next, we also have the previous day's high. So this is the candle we'll actually be finding our trade on. But if we were to mark off the previous candles high and low, this would let us know where the liquidity from the previous day is lying. So now we look at the previous day. We see that we close bullish. Next candle opens up. Now let's read what happened with these candles. We had a bullish candle closure. The next one opened up. We immediately impulsed to the buy side. OK, so we took all the stops out above the buy side and then we crashed bearish. So we can see the manipulation went bullish immediately. So this is letting us know that during London session, we have a high probability of price rolling over to the downside. Now, let's use the same logic. And if price immediately went bearish, right, towards the candle body low or even through this low, there would be a higher probability of the rest of the day transitioning bullish. So let's go down to the three hour time frame now. And the next thing I want to do is actually look at are we in premium or discount? So what we can do is put a fib on this, which would be the last impulse from the low to the high. And we can obviously see we're above the 50 percent. So price is always trying to rebalance. If we put our fib on any of these little impulses within this range, what we could actually see is that when price is sitting under the 50 percent, you're looking for buys from demand levels. And when it's above the 50 percent, you're looking for shorts back to equilibrium or through equilibrium. And you can literally drag this to any impulse and you'll see it be accurate. You can see as price was impulsing here, we end up rebalancing to equilibrium. If we move it down here. We can see the same thing. Price swings back up to equilibrium and so on. So using the same logic on this impulse, we would only be looking for shorts above this 50 percent range. Being above that 50 percent is just one confluence. We also have that we ran out the previous day's high and that was during our accumulation phase. And then we also have multiple levels of liquidity on the three hour time frame. So we can see that we have Wednesday's high. And we also have Friday's high from last week. So I want us to think about this logically, as in if we just ran the liquidity from Wednesday's high, Friday's high, we ran the previous day's high and we're also above the 50 percent of this range. What would be the probabilities of price continuing that buy side movement versus seeing a take profit or retracement event start? Now, obviously, the odds would be higher that the market would want to reverse. And that's the whole game of trading is on a daily basis, anticipating who will be stronger, the buyers or the sellers. All right. So the next thing is going to be finding what I call the order pool. Now, I do this based off the three hour time frame. And for an example, wherever we're looking at trading, so we would be looking at trading this blue area, which is London session. I'm going to be looking to the left for levels that created turning points. So we can look for a bullish bearish rejection, such as this point and this point, or we can look for candles that created a very strong impulse. It would be like this candle that created a wick to the top and then a strong impulse. When price comes back up to these wicks, a lot of times we'll get a reaction. But since these wicks kind of accumulated and popped through everything to our left besides this range, we'll just use the two that we have here. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is just draw a rectangle box across this line. OK, so from the pious wick all the way down and we'll refine this on a lower time frame. Next, we can use this bullish bearish rejection that we had here. And you can see that price retested it over and over in this range. So those would be my two key levels of supply for this morning session. Now, the next thing I want to do is refine this down to an order block. So what we're going to do is start from usually around the 30 minute time frame. And I'm going to look for the first clean order block we see in this range. So if you notice, this bearish order block had a nice candle body, but it also had a very long wick. 
this wick is not giving us a clear read on where the supply is at. So we want to go down until we see a very clean base candle in this bear shorter block. And the same thing here. Although we did close the bear shorter block, we had a lot of wicks. So let's keep going down. Let's try the 20. Let's try the 15. All right, so on the 15 time frame, we can see that this one actually cleaned up pretty nicely. So we had that one bullish candle going up and then the two bearish candles coming down. So that gives us the key level of supply um, for this zone. Now we're gonna work on this one. All right, and there we go. So now on the 10 minute time frame, we can see we had this bearish bullish bearish pattern. So now what we can do is highlight this bearish candle that also correlates with that base and that gives us the clear read on where supply is at for this range. Okay, so for this previous day's high and order pool. Now, a confirmation of that is always looking at how price reacted to it. So we can see this price action tapped into it perfectly and rejected, causing a very strong turning point. So even if you were trading New York this day and you retest that order pool, price never reached back to this price point until it made a new sell side liquidity low. So now that we figured out the higher time frame direction, the next thing we want to do is include our lunch liquidity. So if we were looking to trade New York session, we're looking back from four to 7 a.m. for our liquidity. And if we're looking to trade London session, we'd be looking back from 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. All right, so for an example, if we look at what price did here, we can see that this line, which is New York midnight, represents 11 p.m. for me in CST. So we're going to move all the way over to 2 a.m. We can see that comes in right here. So let's go ahead and drop a vertical line right there. So now I want to look at the liquidity that's formed during this range. All right. So if I drag a box from the lowest point up to this highest point, we can see that this is the liquidity that has formed building up into London's open. All right now. Personally, what I like to do is you see how we have a continuation candle here um, going into 2 a.m. I want to find the swing point that's created and that's going to be my true range. So what I'll do in this case is since we got a rejection coming from here, we're going to move the box up to this wick high. So the logic behind this is if price is in a continuation pa uh, pattern when it's going into a new session, we technically have not made a new structure, right? But now when we see this rejection, we understand that there's liquidity above it. There's stop losses above it. So that's the whole point is we want to see the actual turning point of the liquidity we want to see get ran. So this will be the level we look for a inducement or a liquidity rate. So we can see here after price fell, we came down and actually ran the lunch liquidity. So this would be Asia lunch liquidity. This would be London lunch liquidity. So remember, we're not looking for buys because the higher time frame is telling us that the market wants to go short. But we can even see after we cleared Asia's lunch liquidity, all this build up after the new daily candle open, price still gave us a nice impulse to the run of buy side liquidity. So all I did was draw a horizontal line off of this point here, which is our highest point during that London lunch time. And then what we're looking for is for price to break past it, right? Raid that liquidity. And then on a lower time frame, we want to start to see a transition. So just looking at the five minute time frame, there's a couple things we can spot immediately. We have this very strong bullish candle pushing into our range. We have these two bearish candles closed here. We had a third candle that closed here and left an imbalance open. So now we have a sell side imbalance that has printed on the five minute time frame. So let's once again think about the logic from the higher time frame. We ran the previous day's high. We ran out two previous days high as well which was Friday and I believe Wednesday. From there, we dropped down to a lower time frame. We then found our lunch liquidity. Price had continuation till around 2.15, so we simply moved our box up to the high before we got that reversal, and that showed us where the liquidity was in that range. From that point, we simply waited for price to raid the high, grab the stops. We then dropped down to the five minute time frame to watch for the shift from bullish momentum to bearish momentum. And lastly, we dropped down to the one minute time frame. Now, if we look at how price action actually formed here, we didn't have a short term low on the one minute time frame until here, which would be the next correlations we need. We need a short term low run as well as an imbalance creation. Now, the first imbalance is the one we want to focus on because the algorithm is always going to try to rebalance back up to the first imbalance created. So are all of these lower ones valid? Yes, they are. But the thing is, price to move efficiently has to fill in all of these imbalances. 
which means that the highest probability entries will always come from that first imbalance printed because that would fill in all of the algorithm below it. And I'm sure you've noticed in your back testing when price actually comes back to that first imbalance, you see a very strong impulse like this that takes price away. And this is why it's so important to be patient in your trading. We can see price swung up here, got very close, but did not actually deliver. If you did take a short here, you could have been thinking that you were already catching that sell side expansion for continuation based off the higher time frames. And we simply see we enter a consolidation range, swing above that point. And then we have that sell side delivery. So if you did enter here with your stops above or even above this imbalance, you may have got stopped out or you definitely would have dealt with a lack of confidence in this trade as it started showing reversal signs right back up into your range. So the best way to think about this, the market is gonna try to wear you down. It's gonna try to make you lose belief in this actual position. And usually as soon as you do, the market has a huge shift like it shows here. But nonetheless, we have the run of our first short-term low on the one minute time frame. We could either use this one or technically that run there. And then from there, I'm highlighting that first imbalance that was printed. I'm waiting for price to return into it. Now, in this case, we can see that technically we did not actually get back to it till New York session, but the trade is still valid. So as we enter that imbalance, either wait for the rejection candle or you can enter as price is pushing bullish. You simply place your stop loss above the order pool. So in this case, a seven pip stop would have been perfectly fine to get you above the swing point of this bearish order block on the one minute time frame. And as you can see, the rest was history on this pair. Now this specific move ended up pushing for over a one to 20 R in New York session alone. Um, I believe this was NFP day. So that's why we had that much volatility, but overall still the same logic as if we approached any other trade in the market. So let's check out a few more setups here. Um, we'll break down New York and then we'll break down London. So starting from that weekly time frame, we can see we had a bullish bearish bullish pattern, price impulse to up. If we look to the left, we actually had this buy side imbalance. So we want to highlight this range. And then when we go down to the daily time frame, we want to see how that range was treated. So we can see after we entered into it, we rejected very strongly. Um, we did not close above the previous bearish candle, but we did close two consecutive bullish candles. And if we look to the left also, we did have a bullish order block here that price returned into and is starting to reject from. So as we go down to lower time frames, what we want to see is what could actually maintain the bullish bias for price. So we can see from down here on the three hour, we started running short term highs, moving our way up, creating buy side imbalances. So it does look like a healthy transition. So what I'm gonna do is grab my fib from the low, bring it all the way up to the highest wick point here. And we can see that the market actually rebalanced right back to where? 50% or equilibrium. So when we're looking for those higher time frame points of interest, we always want to correlate it with premium or discount. Under the 50%, we had a couple different levels the price can come to. Number one would be this imbalance range. Number two would be this bullish order block that we can refine to a lower time frame. And of course, there's going to be a point of interest in the actual turning point down here. So for us, when New York session starts, we can see that we're already sitting at equilibrium. We're already sitting at the lows. So logically, we would be looking for a continuation. So the next step for me is to actually highlight my H3 order pools. Now, once again, these are drawn off the wicks of the H3 candles. So for an example here, this candle creating an expansion that left an imbalance would be an order pool. And the same thing for this wick low here, this would be an order pool. And just as we did before, we're gonna highlight zones based off of these ranges. Then we're gonna go to the lower time frame to actually refine them. All right, so now let's drop down starting from the 30 minute and try to find the true order block ranges. So this one isn't too bad. We can see a nice base candle. It does have a bit of a wick. So let's see if we can refine. Okay, so we have a, a healthy base here. So that's two time frames that correlate with a strong range. Same thing for the 10 minute time frame. So I actually like this one. Um, let's drop down a little bit lower. Okay, so this one down here, what I would do is refine it to this bearish candle. So I'd put the base on that candle body high, move it there. And then this one I actually like because it correlates with so many different time frames for that base candle. Um, if you wanted to, you can refine up to that bearish candle uh, to capture that full range. So that's the overall goal with those order pools. You're really just trying to find the true level of demand um, for that area. So nonetheless, we see that price actually comes down into our range. So let's go to the five minute. 
And the next thing we want to do is find the London lunch liquidity. So the London lunch liquidity is going to be from 4 to 7 a.m. CST. All right. So from here all the way up until here. So now we want to highlight the liquidity that was formed in that range. So we have this high all the way down to this low. And if you guys remember the previous one, we continued expanding because we did not actually put in a low. It was just continuation. So for example, if these bearish candles were printed going into 7 a.m., we would then just move this zone down to the next actual turning point. So that would give us the actual structural low that we'd want to see ran as liquidity. So since we already had a low when price closed here, we can use this range. So now New York session starts. We run out the low, right? We push to our order pool. We're correlated with the 50% of the equilibrium. So now I want to drop down to the one minute time frame and actually look for an entry based off a short term high run and an imbalance creation. Now, before we even drop, I want to show you guys a trick to spotting the breaks on the one minute time frame when you're on the five minute. So I want you to think about the logic of what a bullish order block is on the one minute time frame. If we really think about it, we had the opening of that bearish candle going down, right? So it opened here it manipulated up real quick, crashed down, and then it closed here. Then we have the open of the next candle. So we manipulate down and then we have a huge engulfing candle, right? So what happened when we actually passed these points? On the one minute time frame, we've shifted. We had a sign of weakness or break of structure, and that is going to create the base candle of a five minute order block. Okay, so looking at this bullish order block is the same thing as seeing a shift or a break of structure on the one minute. So, what are we looking for now? On this five minute time frame, we can see we printed an imbalance. So, we can actually highlight that before we drop to the one minute. Now, what we're going to notice is this return to the imbalance is going to be the same thing as if we had a return into the imbalance on the one minute, and then we're going to see a continuation away. So let's drop down and I'll show you guys an example of that. All right, guys. So here we are. So we can see we had a left head, right shoulder quasi. Um, so if you guys are familiar with this, what we're looking for is for the head of the pattern to form an order block and actually maintain a demand level for that right shoulder. So we can see that this shoulder was higher, price breaks through it, bullish order block, retest, order consumption, so a lot of wicks to the bottom side, huge impulse from the range, letting us know that this was a true level of demand. And then from there, we create that imbalance. So on the one minute, this whole range is an imbalance, right? So that whole range here is an imbalance. So the first thing I would do when I'm trying to find an entry is number one, just measuring it out. Can I get a seven pip stop loss by just taking the trade based off the retest of this first imbalance created? And the answer is yes. So I would still be able to get under this order pool if I just took the trade here. Now, if you wanted to get all the way under here, you would either have to increase your stop loss or be patient and allow price to come a little bit deeper into this range. And both of those things would have worked in this case, right? So when you're correlating the one minute with the five minute, the overall goal is simply to get your stop loss to a safe place because it doesn't matter if the one minute is going to fill this in fully or if it's just simply going to correlate with the five minute imbalance. As long as you're in the trade, the only difference is are you going to experience a few minutes of drawdown in this range before the market actually reverses? Now, this is different than the breakdown we just did before, because remember, the other stop loss was actually inside of the move. So if price did want to retest to that first imbalance on the previous setup, you'd actually get stopped out versus this one. If it wants to retest, your stop loss is still safe. So it's all about placing your stop loss strategically. After the entry, we'd first go for the one to three risk reward. And then from there, we can target previous highs and lows. So the actual London high, we had equal highs in this range as well. And as we can see, it did take a while, but price did play out here. And if we zoom back up to the H1 time frame, we can see that we were able to get our entry on the wick of this bearish candle. And from there, we actually expanded back bullish for the higher time frame. So this was a perfect entry based off the transition of the one minute time frame using that London less liquidity 
um, the New York AM model, as well as order pools and balances, all that good stuff. So let's break down London here and then we'll wrap up the video. For this, we can technically use the same fib because we did not actually make a new high during this London session. So as we're looking at price action, we're definitely above the 50, which means that we're looking for shorts. Now above the 50, we want to also look for sell side order pools. So now from our session, I'm looking to the left. We see a bullish bearish rejection here. We see a bearish candle that created a very strong impulse here. Those are going to be my two H3 order pool ranges that I'm looking for price to interact with and potentially reverse from. So now I'm just going to draw out my zones as before, and then I'm going to refine them to a lower time frame. This is actually a really nice bearish order block here, so we can use this one. So overall, very healthy base candle order consumption to the top. I really like that one. And then what we'll do is we'll just refine that one a little bit more. All right, so we can see this first one, it doesn't really form a clean order block for us because even here, we're not actually engulfing um, this next candle rejects lower, but it still has order consumption on both sides. So this wouldn't be the most ideal for me. So that would help me narrow down actually using this as a level I want to take a trade from or not. But just for the purpose of this video, let's leave it and act like we weren't sure if it was going to respond off of the first one or the second one. All right. So the next step, once we have our order pools laid out, we can check the previous day's range. So we can see we had a bearish candle close. You can see we opened here. It looks like price went up and then we actually crashed down, came back bullish. So let's drop to the lower time frame. And the next thing we want to do is highlight our Asia lunch liquidity. So we have 11 p.m. up until 2 a.m. So what do you guys notice in this range? You notice how when price was actually pushing up to this liquidity, we were still within our Asia lunch time. So we actually wouldn't be looking to trade just yet. We'd be waiting for the liquidity to actually form for us to look for trades. All right, so for this next setup, now that we have our lunch liquidity highlighted, what we're looking for is the opening for that 2 a.m. time. So if we look at the price of this, we have a high at 1.26348. We have a high of 1.26346. Now, I truly want you guys to pay attention to how these candlesticks are forming. You see how at the end of our period, our lunch liquidity period, we start to form these order consumption wicks. This is letting us know that a transition is about to occur. So the 2 a.m. candle raids the high of that lunch liquidity period, and then we transition. Now, real quick, let's go back to the previous setups. So the previous one we just broke down, we had this turning point that was very nice, right? We had that bearish bullish rejection. So we know that we we're creating a low and we wanted to see that rated. Let's go back to the other. And if we look at this one, which was NFP, you see how if we put our box back on this range. When price was actually going into that next period of time, let me put this correctly. When it was going into that next period of time, we did not close a rejection candle. The next candle just exploded through and closed bullish. Right. So we already took out the high now and it's just continuing. It's in a continuation fashion. It's not showing us a turning point or order consumption. That's the difference in these setups. If we look at this range on the five minute time frame. We can definitely see that this is telling us there's a rejection and then we close a bearish order block. Now, once again, what does a bearish order block equal on the lower time frame? It's going to equal a break of structure or at least a sign of weakness on the one minute time frame. The bearish order block closing with these wicks to the top side from our order pool, it already rated the lunch liquidity and gave us a turning point. That is a confirmation for me that the market is looking to go short. And this is the main reason I wanted to do different setups in this video so that you guys can start training your eyes to see these little intricate details that will make the difference between, you know, taking the trade and sitting on your hands. So nonetheless, we can see that we rated the Asia lunch high here. So this bearish candle closes. We can mark off our short term low. And next, I'm simply waiting until a sell side imbalance is created, which we do with this third candle. So after we create both of the confirmations I need, the run of a short term low, I'm going to get the short position tool and simply just measure out my stop loss. As long as I can fit above the swing point, which will be this high with a six to seven pip stop loss, I am perfectly fine taking this trade simply off the closure of that third candle. Because once this closes, this is a sell side imbalance. This is not going to change. It's already locked in. Okay. It's locked in. 
So the same thing applies as the last setup. I don't care if price wants to come back into this range and retest. I know that it'll be drawdown of, you know, two pips or so. I'm not really worried about that. What I'm worried about is did my stop loss fit above the swing point? Because price can play around as much as it wants to consolidate, shoot wicks up, etc. But as long as your stop is above that swing point or below that swing point, that trade is still valid to take. And as we can see with that trade taken, a one to three would have been hit pretty easily, actually targeting right back down to the low of the lunch liquidity range. And then from there, we do see price push a bit lower. And then we kind of consolidate in the London lunch time frame until New York starts and we end up impulsing right back bullish. But nonetheless, this is how I use the New York and London AM kill zone in correlation with the TGFX strategy.